Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the LCK. But it's a special kind of LCK today. We got the LCK promotions for 2020 spring coming to you live. I'm Valdez, with me is LS, aka Lost Sight. We're going to be bringing you guys the cast here tonight, and uh, it's going to be an interesting one, right? We had Hanwa and Jenner as two of the teams fighting with KT to try to not get into relegations. Uh, Jenner got relegated early. Hanwa eventually ended up there. And honestly, you know, with Jenner and their 0-18 and in LCK Summer and a couple of decent teams coming up from Challengers, really anything could happen here tonight, Ellis. Yeah, we have Team Dynamics and APK that rose up from Challengers, but for those of you guys that don't know, Team Dynamics basically is Josia Sharks, who joined yes. APK. Previously, they are rebranded a little bit weaker due to the roster changes that they suffered as we moved into summer. APK has some roster changes as well. I'm not so sure if either of these teams are actually going to be able to beat Hanwha Life. They might have a chance yeah. against Jin Air, but I view it as... They both actually got weaker in summer, even though they're still both here again today. Mm. Don't yeah. know that, uh... I, I just, I, it brings me back to the spring uh, relegations, or I suppose 2008 yeah. or 2019 summer uh, promotions. And it was not exactly, I, I just remember KT sweeping everybody, including Jin Air, and uh, nobody was really able to do anything even against Jin Air last time around. So if you are correct, uh, LS, then we might just have Hanwha Life and Jin Air go back up. But ES Sharks, as you did mention, uh, not the ES Sharks here anymore. The roster coming over to Team Dynamics. And Team Dynamics, they got first place in Challengers. They went 11 and three, I believe it was. And because they did get first place, they automatically qualified. APK Prince, um, they, I, I believe they finished fourth or fifth or something, and then they ran through the bracket to actually uh, finish off and make it into this promotion. So they're on a bit of a streak, and they're doing pretty well. We're taking a look here at uh, Humble Life, who is going to be playing up against APK Prince for our first matchup tonight. And it does look like Mujin is starting or I, I don't no. know what this no I think, I think it's just saying that those are the players and it might just be based on uh, age or not exactly sure maybe it's like Korean alphabetical order or something like that because uh, yeah I believe Bono is going to be starting okay well APK you can see their roster right here obviously missing Mickey yeah. in the mid lane now that, so yeah. we'll see what that ends up meaning for them as the game do commence. Yeah. Mickey was uh, pretty important, I feel, <laughs> to APK. I would have to say that I do agree with you, although he was uh, a little bit inconsistent and he didn't exactly pop off the last time. Um, he was absolutely a very strong mid lane player and losing him is always going to hurt, regardless of the team. And uh, Cover and Haesong looked into those two players a little bit. APK Prince is their first team, actually. So a couple of new guys coming up here, from what I could gather. And uh, yeah, I mean, they're on the big stage now, essentially, here at Lal Park, because Challengers is not played here at Lal Park. It's at a different place, and so might be feeling the nerves as we are going to get into some points of the match. It's the first promotion series after the team's foundation for Hanwha versus the first promotion series after eight splits as an organization playing in Challengers Korea. And down there, Creative APK prefers Tristana and Dr. Mundo top. What have they prepared for the promotion series? And then the very bottom one, Kia is the jungle early game god, Bono versus 2014 LCK Summer Champion, Kakao. We'll have to see what ends up happening here. The creative picks I do think is an interesting one. We don't really get creative picks in the LCK. Yeah. 
And uh, I mean, Challenger Azir's, Korea Azir's used creative. to have a lot of creative picks. <laughs> Once upon a time. Yeah, I, I, I heard about this guy. I think his name was like... Larry Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Larry Seinfeld? <laughs> used to, uh, used to <laughs> try to shake up the meta down there, but no longer. Not, uh, not really into chicken anymore. No, yeah. Uh, I join you on the We, we don't need any more chicken. Yeah. Especially from that place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're in relegation yeah. now, I believe, in Challenger. So. Or BBQ. Well, key player comparison. Bono versus Kakao here. And the playoff games is listed on the right of Kakao. 4.4 KDA, 65.4% kill participation. And he's playing Skarner and Elise. So two very, very different themed junglers. And then Bono yeah. on the flip side with Jarvan and Olaf. But there has been some meta shakeups in recent weeks. Maybe we'll experience a little bit more diversity. We've got some smack talk happening here. <laughs> right so on site, can't come over here and say that. How can you top? <laughs> Good old cacao. There on the side of APK, he makes his return. Same lineup here for Hama Life that you always expect. Coming in with Bono in the starting position. Sohan does come out, so no tall up in the top side. And it is going to be Tent in the mid lane, actually. And not Lava. That does start here, so. Hama Life was actually one of those teams that did mix it up from time to time, but. Here, they're just going to be going with who they feel is the strongest. And we'll be starting in game number one. We were talking about, you know, predictions in terms of which teams might make it out. I would happen to agree that Hama Life, I think, is yeah. by far the strongest team here. And I would be surprised if they don't get out uh, with a 2-0 here and then a 3-0 tomorrow. But we'll see if I just curse them or what happens because they are going up against APK Prince, who... Look good coming out on the stage. Ixu, who was once Ixu, changed his name to Ursu and then back to Ixu. He came back after Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> after that happened. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah. we'll have to see how he performs here today in this. Is that a ponytail? It is. Dude, that it, is very rare. He had a full on mullet before when I was looking at it. And I was. I was Say mullet? Yeah, mullet. Oh, man. Yeah, he had a real mullet. And I was like, that was actually a popular hairstyle here in Korea once those those guys from BTS or EXO. Oh, or are they? Somebody had that hairstyle. Are they so, championing it? Championing. Championing it? That's yes, a hard I word. I believe so. Yeah, that's right. That's very weird. Don't say that five times fast. As uh, I believe that is Trigger in the bot lane with the fancy hair. And... Yeah, he had a full-on mullet, and then I guess he tied it up into a ponytail. Okay. Wanted to look clean coming out on stage, but I honestly would have preferred the mullet. Kakao's back here in Korea. He's been on APK Prince for a bit now, and it's always nice to see him playing here on the Korean stage. Let's see what the draft is going to have in store. Now, APK being on blue side, that does worry me a little bit for them because it does mean the counter picks go over the way of Hanwha Life as per usual for red side advantage. But with APK being the challengers and the newcomers having to go in blind against what we presume to be the strongest team in the promotion tournament is definitely going to be an uncomfortable feeling. It's, uh, it's not easy. You know, uh, being the second place coming up from Challenger because then you don't get to play against Jin Air. I mean, we can kind of just honestly say it. After Jin Air's 0 and 18 performance in summer, a lot of people were saying that they don't deserve to be in the LCK. And well, teams and Challengers are just. I think it's. Chomping, the last time? Chomping at the bit or champing at the bit is the correct one? There's an argument over that one. I forget which one is the right one. I think it's champing at the bit, but everybody says chomping. chomping. Everybody says chomping, but apparently it's not correct. Do and you it's know chomping. Chomper from Mario? The chomp? Yeah, the, 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 yeah. the chain chomp? Yeah, he's great. Yeah. It's fun he's to a, he's a great there. guy. Yeah. <laughs> Big fan. Yeah, we, we hung out last Saturday. Okay. Um, anyway, we're getting into the pick ban here. Or the ban and pig. Sorry, forgot who I was casting with. Uh, going into this one. 
as APK will be on blue. Hama Life, you'd imagine they have the choice here of going on red. Silas actually going to be burned. Ba burn. Ban the yeah, wave first. Yeah, you got burned. Burn there right as the first ban. In Kali, the that is called the window. Yeah. And then this is the door over here. That's the door. Are there any other names, ban spots? Or... <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Renekton is going to be banned away by APK. In the second window. <laughs> the upstairs? <laughs> Let's call that the turn. <laughs> and the, is this the river? Yeah, the river's the final All right. ban. The river's the final ban. Okay. <laughs> As a Aatrox finally going to bite the dust. I actually, you know, I don't like teams banning me. Yeah. I feel like he's very vulnerable, but a lot of players like him because he's blind pickable into everything. And so yeah. it feels very nice to He's to flexible know. too. Yeah. Right. And Renekton kind of turned into that as well as more and more people started playing him in the mid lane. And we see him banned out relatively early here as well. LeBlanc fighting the dust as Yumi will be banned on the river. <laughs> Ooh, that's a rough one. The river rat got Yumi. Yeah. That's what happened. Let's see how these teams react to the river. All right, APK, what is going to be their first pick now? We got 10 seconds left to decide. And they're hovering Gragas. We saw a lot of Gragas priority between oh, King yeah. Zone earlier on in the week. Zone and Dom one. Now, will that mean that Yasuo is potentially going to go on to APK? Have to see, as that did seem to be a fad of that day, as more and more champions just started getting contested over and over. But Elise being hovered, and it will get locked in. So now, thematically, how is Hanwha Life going? to accommodate to this Elise. Kiana. Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, they have been in the practice room, clearly, as we're going to get to see most likely Tempt piloting the Kiana. Yeah, comes out early as well, uh, but the two of them together can invade the jungle, especially after Kiana had six, and that can be a deadly duo with a sick ton of damage, so... Got to be careful about that one. Hama Life may be looking to style a little bit here as we do have Zyra Khan as the follow-up. No Yasuo just yet. So now Hama Life just have to choose a champion to respond to this. So ADCs and supports are both extremely wide open, but they're going to actually pick up Lucian. Now, I, I have a feel, I, I have something personal against Lucian. Yeah. Where I feel like the, the reason that every team picks him, for the most part, is to win lane. He, he's designed to win lane. He's designed to be strong inside of the 2v2, accelerate, and have a good growth. But I feel like he's worse than Draven 9 out of 10 times. Yeah. So it's a bit of a letdown <laughs> when the AD carries perhaps just can't pilot I think he's much easier to play compared to Draven. He is a lot easier. Yeah. Compared, yeah. Draven... Arguably the second most difficult ADC. What's number one? Ezreal. Okay, yeah, that should have known that one. The Kled ban, kind of obvious with the Gragas in the first pick slot. Or did I say Kled ban? I meant Yasuo ban. Yep. Uh, uh, but the Kled ban. Maybe they here. never even intended for Yasuo. This would be really nice leveling game yeah. where they just intentionally. First pick the Gragas, they get it out of the way, they want it, and then potentially steal away a ban in the second portion. As now the support pool is being pinched, Thresh and Pike both removed. Hanwha Life, they can just choose support here and reserve the counter pick there up in top lane for Sohan. Yeah. And that is going to be what they do, they're hovering the Nautilus. Nautilus, Kaisa, kind of common, but Lucian, or, yeah, the Lucian coming in with the Nautilus definitely.
kind of interesting. That posture is that that posture is great. I actually play like that. <laughs> yeah, very often. I've seen you on stream a lot yeah. of times playing like that. That is the that's the the hot shot GG. Yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Hot shot GG is a god, by the way. I just wanna that's what the that GG stands for. That's what it stands for. God squared. Good god. <laughs> All right. Good god. Okay. Great god. And good god, we have an echo pick here coming out as cover would be assumedly playing that pick here in the mid lane up against the Kiana. Very interesting one. We didn't see too much echo. Faker picked it up and LCK Summer and had a massive game on that pick. There's a lot of cute things that you can do with echo that we... Um, oh, man. Well, talking about Where picks, are we? <laughs> yeah, we're not in the LCK. Challenger's Korea is a different beast. It's like a door yeah. that you open, <laughs> you look into it. And then you fall down because there's nothing outside now, the door. If Hanwha Life could flex Lucian top lane, that would put Alawi in the grave. Do that it. Would be, that would be an option, but are instead we we're, gonna, <laughs> we're in the LCK. Spell this, right? we, yeah. we don't get stuff like that. I mean, we got Mordekaiser, which is not we something that uh, happens every day. That's like, a, I thought maybe that's something we could be seeing later from Tana. But, uh... Ooh, that's a really nice yeah. bird. Is that a Pepe frog? Is that a frog? That was a bird. You just no, said the, it. No, the, the <laughs> frog to the right of it. Oh, I didn't see the frog. All right. That, that Pepe frog is getting more and more common. Yeah. I see it on Twitter, like, outside of internet stuff, yeah. like, outside of gaming. It's very interesting, the popularity rise of Pepe the frog. All right, well, let's talk about what both team compositions want to do here. Alawi, Gragas, Echo, Zaya, and Rakan for APK. Lots of late game scaling inside of this team composition. Many of these champions don't slow down at all. And so there's a lot of versatility, massive Baron play ability coming out of the APK lineup here that can easily skirmish inside of narrow corridors. In fact, they want to because of the Alawi and the Echo and the Zaya even. So very team fighting based composition here drafted by APK, but the Gragas is gonna have to be on point early on to wave off the pressure by the Elise, because on the flip side, Lucian Nautilus, Kiana Elise, and Mordekaiser, they want to get ahead early, the Kiana and the Mord, if they get ahead, the oppression, backed up by the Elise, and the Lucian potentially accelerating in bottom. This is a very explosive and fast game. Two polar opposite team comps. Absolutely, should make for a fun one here, as the skirmishes should begin. For match one and game one of the 2020 Spring Promotion Tournament. So, as you guys can imagine, if you're longtime viewers of the LCK and you've been following us through 2019, uh, there are less fans here than normal. This is the promotion series. So, especially, you know, APK Prince, a team that has not been in the LCK just yet. And the Hanwha Life fans, they have more of their group coming down, but just desperately hoping that they stay in the LCK and on the main broadcast, kind of the major leagues of Korean League of Legends. Well, early on here, does look like Hanwha Life potentially looking for something early on, but just a spread by everyone. Now, the Echo thing that I was mentioning earlier, I'm actually a pretty strong advocate of Echo. I do believe that if you can pilot the champion as well as the Chinese player, if I don't know, every time I try to say his name, I mess it up, but he's a Chinese player in the LPL that on the Korean ladder, he only plays Echo. He gets Challenger, yeah. 60, 65% win rate, 700, 800 LP. Very often, he'll only play Echo on ladder, but he can play other champions in competitive. Okay. So if you can play it as well as him, the champion is insane. <laughs> but usually we don't get people that can pilot Echo as good as that player. But some of the- uh, Who's better at Echo, Faker or that guy? That guy. Yeah, yeah, for real? Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where I have to give it to the one trick. 
<laughs> okay. I, I really do. All right. As one of the interesting things that we might see is, for instance, Echo hits level six. You don't skill your R, so the clone's never following you. Yeah. And it can deceive opponents. And then you skill it as the fight starts, and you just rewind in time. It's a nice little abusive thing that in solo queue is really powerful. Yeah. In competitive, probably less so. So, Sangun flashed in the bottom lane. We saw Secret kind of getting dumped on. And I was wondering, you know, how did he take this trade? Why is he so far forward? Must have been because of the flash that Sangin was able to escape from a Rakan Grand Entrance. And then, uh, Rakan did take a bunch of damage because of that. So it actually ends up being a winning trade here for APK in the bot lane. Bono now making his way down. And now, how can Hanwha Life actually weave the story together to make APK believe that they've messed up? Because ultimately, that's the goal right here. Hanwha Life have to convince APK that they made a genuine error in movement or a trade. So Nautilus tries to go for the hook, but then Songyun doesn't follow up. Is it really miscommunication? And does Rakan follow the Nautilus and try to chain a combo together? In which case, it opens up Bono to come down on the Elise. So, APK not buying what Han Lao's life was selling. Yeah, and uh, Bono's gonna stay bottom lane here. Elise, one of the best junglers at diving turrets, but take a look at the respect here from Trigger and Secret. Um, if they die right now, the game's over. <laughs> I, just okay. wanna, I just wanna throw that Four out Four minutes there. in, you know. And they're going to end up dodging it very nicely, actually, at the end of the day. You know, they, they only missed one, maybe two CS, and they stay safe. So Here it ends up Gragas. being good, he has Predator. Good trade. Oh, is Elise going to recall? Oh, Sangin she's still doesn't here. have Flash. Here we go, the Flash nice in two. by Secret, but Sangin is still going to be dead. First Blood comes in, but Trigger looking to survive. The heal is going to be used. And APK Prince pick up first let bot blood in the bottom. And this is a really big turnaround. Zaya was actually bleeding a lot in the CS department, and the pressure that was getting put out by Hanwha Life was quite a lot. And so for Kakao to be able to come down here and relieve that pressure is so big for them right now, especially because they went out so well in the summoner trade. And everything's going quite well on the top side of the map. Mordekaiser pick not really working out that well. At least not so far. Yeah. Unfortunate. The Alawi is... <laughs> Swap the Lucian to top lane. It would have been yeah. too much to ask here in Season no, 9. Too, too hard, too hard. Well, this is a replay of the gang. Song Yun, he played it really well. He really did. He juked it, and he kept them honest as much as he could, but he ended up going down at the end. It was a really nice call by APK. Song Yun, you know, played it, you know, as well as he possibly could have, so can't really fault him there. The real question that we never really got a answer to was how exactly was he baited into blowing his flash that early? Um, we can only assume it was the Rakan engage, but at level one, I mean, you're not really going to take that much damage. Is it really worth a flash? As Secret's been here a couple of times, Tempt actually didn't see him the first time. He is going to get knocked up as he will help out Echo in the push. Kiana had hit level six first and made it a little bit difficult, but the Echo still doing okay after some help. Kao now looking at top lane potentially. Look at the first item picked up by Ixu. Yeah. <laughs> no death realm shall be had now in top lane. So on is probably so sad right now. Up there as Cuddle Crab's gonna be taken away by Hanwha Life. Elise now moving in to the red side. Thinking about maybe trying to steal away the reds, but doesn't actually elect to start it. Respecting that Echo has the push on mid lane and able to move down immediately if need be. I was talking about invade potential of Kiana Elise, but Elise Nautilus also quite a good duo to get on in there. A ton of CC that you can chain up. 
so far, we've been impressed by the side of APK. Although, trade up here in the top lane, ultimate going to be used by both parties. One of them will get QSS'd. And uh, nobody takes any damage. So, <laughs> yeah, not much happening. Both the players up here on the top lane building defensively. You can see the Seeker's Arm Guard already available for the uh, Mordekaiser. As I mentioned, Tana is one of our Mordekaiser players in the LCK, but of course, Doran in recent times from Griffin has been picking up this pick, so it has been gaining a little bit of popularity here in the LCK. It has, and mostly against melee top laners, but already, I mean, it has been shut down, essentially, by the Alawi. And in later stages of the game, the only champion that we can assume that Mord should be able to kill would be the Gragas. The Echo probably a little bit too slippery, has the parallel convergence and whatnot. Can't really imagine the Mord will help out too well there. Now, interestingly enough, Mountain Drake goes the way of APK. I talked about earlier on, their team composition scales a lot better than Hanwha Life. They love fighting around Baron inside of Hanwha Life's red side jungle. And so, things are not looking that good, actually, yeah. for Hanwha Life right now. You're talking about maybe a, uh, okay, Ultimate is going to go off here as he just wants to get away from the Echo and get a good trade at the end of the day. But I was joking about cursing Hanwha Life before coming into this one and saying, you know, they'll probably go 2-0-3-0, but not looking too good so far in the beginning of game one. Doesn't mean that APK is going to run away with this one, but a nice little lead, and especially with their comp, as you mentioned, the one that scales better. Uh, this is a team that is in a great spot. And when you're the new team on the block, obviously you want to get that good start just to have a good mental game. Coming into it as Gragas once again looking for a gank. As Sohan may have just gone for a fake ward as there was actually no ward placed and here he comes trying to land that one the chilling smite gonna come in so on tries to flash away but the cast should be good enough as Ixu is going to pick up the kill and get away from that last turret shot second kill of the game also going APK's way and I really like the fact that they chose to use Ixu's flash rather than Kakao's which serves a much larger purpose yeah. in the later stages of the game. It's very easy for Kakao to follow up with the flash there, but they end up allowing Ixu to finalize the kill. The Mordekaiser is just so far behind right now that you can't imagine that Hama Life is going to be in a position to actually eat the Infernal Dragon once it comes up or even threaten to put up a fight. Trade coming down here. The culling is going to be used. A lot of that damage dodged by the Feather Storm from Trigger. As it kind of just looked like Ki and Sangyun wanted to fight. And they do end up getting the better trade at the end of the day. So ends up being a good idea. There still is the Rakan ultimate though. So if they wanted to go for a gank... Could work out, but a nice right. read on the rotation. And once again, Trigger and Secret are going to dodge a dive in the bottom. And Bono, he's down two levels right now in the jungle. So he really needs to make something happen because base levels are falling behind everywhere. So on is down one up in top. Being down two in the jungle, he does have his wolf camp and his... Well, he has Bertha up <gasps> at the Gromp camp. Right over there. Oh, Look at that. Man. Kakao's pathing. You know, I was about to talk about Bono and how he, some days he's so on, some days he's so off, but Kakao, he is on today. Going to set up another gank in the bottom side, pick up his second kill so far in this tournament. And this just looks like a super easy game so far for APK. Gragas is going to move over to the right-hand side and like a true savant managed to RNG the scuttle crab as we take a look at this and this is the point where yes, Kakao can follow the Mordekaiser and everything can be okay. There's also different ways to play out that fight, but down here in bottom, really slow reaction to everything by Hanwha Life, but nonetheless, APK, they're there and they're just running a field day. Really surprised Kakao didn't pick up a Dark Seal. All the uh, yeah. 
you know? To be honest about that. And also, no call on the Alawi, despite as far ahead she is, so. Call is on the Zaya, though. Someone's, someone's got a call. Someone's got so, a call. So, uh, we're happy with that. We have the call, and we have the calling from Lucian, so. Enough call, no reaction in this one, so no call to me. But that's okay, as Engage's gonna come down. That ultimate is going to sail wide into the wall. Secret comes in here, trying to sacrifice his life. Coming back, though, is the Echo, and looking for the kill. He's gonna pick it up, as Ixu is gonna go for the teleport coming on in here. Won't be able to kill Tempt. Although Tempt is slowed down and sticks around for a while. But at the end of the day, they trade the support for a kill onto Echo in the mid lane. Tempt does get his one as Kakao what? just gonna face check here, has to flash away to get away from this one. So he was having a great early game, but then we really do not know what that was. Yeah, we don't know what that was, but also, I'm a life really sloppy on a, on a mechanical level. A little bit surprised right there. Mordekaiser, uh, 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 this is a late TP, and you know that APK loves to team fight, and we're getting into it already as Sohan and Zongyun are gonna be charmed up, a cover very low on the backside as Gragas is gonna go down. Tempt was able to assassinate him. As coming on in now is APK. The Cocoon is going to deter them from following any further. A one-for-one -one trade, but at the end of the day, Infernal as well, going to the scaling team of APK. Yeah, do you want to tell me what the hell that teleport was, Valdez? Because I'm, I'm I, I don't have the answers for you. Wrapping my head around it. He yeah. could have gotten several turret plates up in top lane, which is more valuable than the assumed kill that he would expect to get in terms of gold value, given that he would also get minions XP and minion waves, the gold from that. So, right here, Cover able to use his ultimate to get back in, eventually gets on to Bono, who tried to flash away. And then in the dragon, I, I just have no idea what they're thinking. He has absolutely no mana. He gets the anchor off. Temp comes in, able to execute the cow on the left-hand side. But there's no universe where they ever win this fight. And there's also no universe why you should ever teleport down the Mordekaiser. Yeah, that really was just a desperation play of sorts. I mean, that really gained them absolutely nothing at the end of the day when they could have got so much more. And this is not what I was expecting coming into this match. I was expecting APK from the last time in spring, and I was expecting Hanwha Life to come in here and kind of show them what's what in the LCK, but it kind of feels like APK showing them what's what in Challenger Series because... We used to joke about how the uh, Challengers Korea was the best tournament in the world, the best league, because they had Griffin and Domlin and uh, even Sandbox, you know, all these great yeah. teams. But uh, APK's trying to live that dream again tonight. They're certainly looking like they're going to run away with at least game number one. And honestly, the skill differential, it does seem to be semi-obvious in bottom lane, at least with how stuff was going early on. Well, let's yeah. Not much gonna happen there. It's a trade of ultimates as he was trying to stop the turret from going down, but it still does in the end. And Song Yoon and Ki now, they're just gonna recall four and a half thousand gold almost is the difference. As Kakao goes back to his jungle. Rubber band camps are a wonderful thing, by the way. Bono and Kakao are almost the same level. Yeah. I mean, Kakao early on in this game, um, he had two kills, and also he was ahead on CS on the Elise, and Elise did spend a lot of time in the bottom lane kind of doing nothing, and that is part of the reason, but it did feel like Kakao did win the early game jungle by a long shot. Now Hama Life, they're setting up around the Fog of War, but they don't know that APK knows that they're all inside of that brush right now. Yeah. They're gonna oh, be man. spotted here now, but the engage. What? Okay, well, they're just gonna pull that uh, ghost in from the Nautilus instead. As Now we're gonna go for the 17-minute Rift Herald. 
they say, hey, we're ahead, we might as well get any objective that we can at this moment, and if they want to team fight 5v5, we'll be happy with that, with the lead that we do have. Anvilite really look like they want to fight this one, but I'm not sure if it's a good idea. Ultimate comes out early for Mixu, and he is going to be burst down, as that is not enough damage going on to K. We got the 1v1 here in the Death Realm. As actually trying to run away Ingo's secret now with the engage, but getting too low as cover's going to get bursted at the end of it all. And, well, they had a massive lead, and somehow they were still able to lose the fight. Yeah, they have a massive advantage right now. They have the Infernal Dragon. They have the better team composition, but they did end up losing the team fight. And so APK is going to have to reset a little bit. There's still second four item completions waiting to come in on a few of their champions. As we take a look at what's happening right here, APK, they're starting the Rift Carol. Just take a look at what Ix is doing. I have no idea. It almost looks like he's just not on comms with the rest of his <laughs> teammates. He's giving his best Leroy Jenkins impression as he ran up solo 1v5, got completely annihilated. Now, this isn't supposed to happen. The Alawi is supposed to live or at least deal massive amounts of damage inside of the team fight, but she wasn't able to, and so Hanwha Life able to take the remaining 5v4 and have something nice happen. Now, Hanwha Life, I think taking the Ocean Dragon is a really bad decision because you run the risk of causing another Infernal or a Mountain to spawn, yeah. and the percentage chance that Hanwha Life have to get that is much lower than APK. Even so, after that totally botched right. fight, APK is still handedly in the lead right now. So now they rolled pretty fortunate. Another Ocean Dragon will come up next. But if you're in the situation that Hanwha Life's in, you can look at it as, okay, well, Ocean Dragon doesn't really benefit the enemy team. So we can use the fact that APK has to invest some time into capturing this if they really want it and we can just continue to be defensive elsewhere on the map as we try to recuperate before the next fight. Now we're going to, uh, you thought the lull state was going for LCK? Well, I mean, we do have, we a, might have a fight here. I mean, it's pretty likely that it just hits and then APK backs away, but let's see how dangerous they want to get here with their lead. Trying to push forward, you'll notice that their siege is pretty abysmal. It is only Zion. Uh, everybody else, I suppose, Rakan has a uh, bit of a range one as the ultimate is going to go down on the secret. Just trying Whoa, to push Tem. him away. Temp's not really plane. able to get in there, though. They don't want to commit to it. Sangya is missing all of his mana. That is something hmm. that would be a little bit unfortunate. Well, let's hope he finds some of that mana before the next fight. You don't want to let it go. Someone give him a life tap a bit. Let's, let's get that back in, <laughs> in this game. Oh, man. <laughs> well, APK uh, still in a very nice lead here. Um, there is one thing that has gone right for Hanwha. It is the mid lane. Tempt 2-0 and 2 on an assassin, and he's a very strong, mechanically skilled top laner. Flash going to be blown here by Ixu as that dredge line will have to be dodged to get away from harm's way. They're probably thinking that if X2 dies there and if he doesn't flash, that maybe Hanwha Life try to gamble a Baron and they just don't even want to risk it. So flashing away is okay. Now here's the interesting thing. The 1-3-1 one, one is quite strong for APK. They are on blue side, which is the color that favors 1-3-1 one, one more. And the Echo and Alawi are problematic. So, more and more scaling continuing to come in. Not sure why Gragas has Morel and Omicon, but I never am. We, we don't like to talk about that. I yeah, here. <laughs> now, see, if Elise stays on Oblivion Orb, Mord already has Morello, and he's going to be in the front the majority of the time anyway. So for Mordekaiser, it's a little bit better. Oblivion Orb already giving the magic penetration, already giving basically all of the HP that you get from the item. No re reason Ooh, to invest. Looking for this. Look at oh, that burst! Man! Where did that come from? 
As, oh, what the hell was that? That is a Gronkus that I want on my team. Saw him clear the ward. They take away the jungler. Burst down the Elise from 100 to zero. In full CC the entire time. So I'm gonna try to get in there. As they are turning on this one. Not sure about this decision. They're gonna get key very low, but the Baron is gonna get all its health back. And well, now they don't have a chance to get the Baron. I have no idea what that decision just was by secret. Uh, engage timings do not seem to be the forte of Challenger Korea teams. I, I do have to say that, Valdez. Yeah. It We're going to probably see a replay of that one more time, but that should have absolutely been a free Baron capture. This is a whole lot of man on oh, the screen right here. Yes. Look at that. See that belly swing from side to side. That guy's not messing around. It's truly magical. <laughs> It was just, it, it, it looked so coordinated, you know. It did. It was very well done. And uh, although the kill was coordinated, the thing that happened after that I really don't know that was, um, we don't even really want to talk about that anymore. It's kind of like when Kakao face checked earlier after his amazing early game. Well, two items completed for Zaya right now and probably going to make his way to Zanya's in the half. Well, so on, you uh, are going to be going into the Ow. Death Realm, and Kakao might be in a little bit of trouble here. He's going to cast him away. Can he survive for long enough? Yes, he can. And so on, just buying time here with the Zanya's. He's absolutely dead. And APK will find another pick in this wonky game number one. So they just continue to get themselves some more gold. And you can see that Mordecai is the only real champion he's going to be able to kill is actually that Gragas. Now, unfortunately for him, Kakao was able to cast him away. And then the angle on the Death Realm, not the greatest. So one has his flash. Yep. Why didn't he just flash the cast to make sure that he could kill Kakao? I suppose he thought he had enough time to, uh, to get in there. And we are getting some more ping pong right now, as Infernal Dragon is going to be the next one that spawns in four and a half minutes. Yeah. Notice how APK, right after the kill, they immediately killed the ocean. It makes sense for them because there is a decently high chance, actually a yeah. much higher chance of a Infernal and a Mountain more than anything else. So it makes sense for them to take that down to make it spawn earlier as well, we're going to get a little one-on-one, -on -one and it's all about the burst today, as that Kiana is one fed champion. And cover, well, he did get sent back in time, didn't he? I think that that's actually what happened yeah. right there. As APK are struggling to really do anything on the map right now, despite everything going well for them. And... I would expect this to actually be one of the advantageous things for the LCK teams is that they're probably a little bit, especially on Wall Life and Jyn Air, a little bit more well-versed in the late game yeah. than some people. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm watching APK and it feels like I'm watching Jyn Air from uh, seasons past where they would get leads and we'd be like, oh, okay, maybe they're actually going to win. And then they would just botch everything because they don't know how to play with leads and they don't know how to play late yeah. games. And APK is definitely showing a bit of that here today. Not saying they don't know how to win, but maybe their late game needs a little bit of a touch up. As more and more time passes, it just took a brief turnaround. More people seem to be coming in. Yeah, it's pretty early, you know, and it's a Monday, so it does make sense. Mondays that, suck, don't yeah. they? they? Mondays, really, yeah. yeah. They're pretty bad. Not a big fan. This was very fair. That, I mean, there. if you look up the word balance on Google and the definition, and then you yeah. click images, it actually has that clip <laughs> as a GIF. Yeah, oh, it's really, okay. It's really strange. For Echo, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was looking very balanced in that fight. And, uh, yeah. Zyrakon gonna leave. It's gonna be the saddest caster curse, by the way, if Hanwha Life managed to win with a grossly worse team composition after 
everything that went so poorly for them early on just because they're able to coordinate a little bit better and mechanically outplay their opponents. And we've seen that a lot in LCK. So yeah. it's not like it's something that we are a stranger to. A minute and 55 seconds until the next Infernal Dragon comes up. Obviously, on my life, really do want to get that. And it's reached a state of the game where that Infernal, when it comes to team fighting value, it's, it's definitely worth more than Baron. Not necessarily oh. trade Baron, but it's worth potentially losing the game. Secret almost just lost his life in the matter of a few milliseconds there as he just barely dodged that cocoon. Not sure why he was kind of checking with his face. Somebody has to do it, but you'd imagine that it would be the Gragas with the Zanyas, but perhaps the Rakan is actually tankier with the items that he has picked up. So maybe at the end of the day it does make sense. But either way, that's just hanging around the Baron. And we're chilling here in the lull state. We are. As the bottom turret goes down, the gold advantage is stuck at 4,000. Now, Echo, he's had the same damage for the last couple of minutes. He only kept purchasing up into his boots. And so the gold allocation for the champions, a lot of it is in Zaya right now. She's at three items, Alawi at two and a half. So we'll have to see what happens here in the team fight over this dragon. Now, I mentioned this dragon is worth losing the game over. Yeah, Probably I mean. going to see Hanwha Life fight for it. You're yeah. going to have to fight for it, right? Uh, well, just running through the river. Ixu again is going to get popped up, but does a huge amount of damage before he goes down. And there you go. Zoan is just going to get into the death realm to try to survive as, well, he just got slapped by a tentacle. Didn't really see how he was able to get that close to one, but ended up dying to it. Down goes the Nautilus, so the Ooh. kill goes down on the support, and now APK are immediately turning towards the Baron, actually. Okay, well, they're moving their way over to the Baron. Ixu has teleport available. They're starting it. This is going to oh, be man. on vision for just a moment. Temps trying to get in there and bait them into a fight. There's no more Death Realm. You're not going to get Kakao out of this pit as it's going to go low and Gragas is going to pick it up for APK. Bono getting so low is immediately going to go down and tempt himself. It's going to go down and all the feathers here from Zaya as well. Pull through to do the damage and that is going to be four members going down and the Baron going to APK. APK now, they're going to turn their attention towards pushing mid. Should immediately go over to the Infernal Dragon. But Cover looks like he wants to push another wave in mid first. And we take a look at how this all happens. It's all actually because Key and Bono are on different pages with chaining their CC. I just also want to point out, Key has Flash here. He got hit by the tentacles. He's actually bringing the tentacles back into his team. So, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not That's not, not so it. Sure. That's not yeah. it, Key. That, you know, no. Just no. Oh, Bono in spider form dives onto the team. I don't know after the Baron dies. Why Tempt even bothered to flash at the very end there? There was not a universe where he would ever make it out. And you were talking about caster curses. I said that Hama Life was going to go undefeated in this tournament. That's definitely been cursed. <laughs> <And> <laughs> yeah. What have you done? <laughs> I might have put the biggest curse on Hama ever. But honestly, I mean. They did not do well. That's part of the reason why they're here in relegations uh, for the LCK. But I don't know if they played a worse game than this one. I mean, Hama Life is better than this. Yeah. They they are not playing like the Hama Life we saw in LCK. They lost a lot of games well, because the LCK has a ton of strong teams. It's been a very long break. And so we have to wonder what have they been doing maybe during the break. And sometimes there are teams, <coughs> Griffin, that uh, after yeah. breaks perform significantly <laughs> worse than one would expect. 
Yeah, I mean, that does seem to be uh, something that affects teams. And APK, I was just talking about it. They played through the whole bracket stage to even make it here, to qualify at all. So they've been playing a lot of League of Legends, and they look on points, you know? They have had some slip-ups, and they're not the cleanest team by any means, but they are dominating Hanma Life in this, in this game at least. Now they're on the push here with the Baron. Decent amount of wave clear from the side of Hanma Life, but not the best as going to be pulled in is the Mordekaiser, and you can see just how much damage this Alawi is doing in the push. You're also talking about 1-3-1. Three, one. They could have decided to try to pull Hama Life apart, but they're just going all five members down in the bottom lane. As APK seem intent on trying to raise this bottom turret, and if Hama Life mess up a team... Uh, that TP is so far away. What? The engage is coming out so early as well. Good stopwatch out of key. As the ultimate only going to hit the Echo is able to dodge it easily. Going on in the huge amount of damage from Cover and Ixu are going to immediately shut down too as APK are pushing in. Not going to look for the win just yet. They'll actually back away and try to play it safe. One of my favorite parts about this team fight is that Soan actually got to the fight later and with less MS than he would have had he just ran off the fountain with home guard. So we got to really just highlight that point. Oh, that was boy. truly the uh, the icing on the cake for me. As he engages on cover, loses a portion of his HP, and then Bono going on a full run. Or, yeah, look at Mordekaiser. He gets here now. <laughs> He's moving on over with his cane. Hey, guys, I'm helping. <laughs> like the, the old, was, was it that? Swain used to move with the cane? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Swain. Apparently, <laughs> Andre is now completed. That might have been the worst teleport I've seen all year. That would, well. I mean, well, I, nah, You did uh, see him teleport a lot of to the ones. Infernal Dragon. True, that one. Actually, that, I might have just lied from a teleport that was in this game. He might have taken, <laughs> yeah. He might have taken the first and second place. Yeah, well, you know. Oh, no, wait. He's winning uh, at something. Uh, who was it? It was an LCK. Someone teleported in the middle of a team fight and just died. Kind of reminds themselves. me of Tall. I forgot who it was. But that was It was last iconic. Year. For sure. Yeah. Life changing, that one. <laughs> for many of us. As uh, pushing in in the top lane is APK. No more Baron, but they do have something better than a Baron. It's 11,000 gold. Or I guess that's actually less than 10,000. Any math, by the way. As uh, without the Baron, they actually will not be able to push the turret at the end of the day. So they're going to go back and buy with all that gold that they do have. Well, the question still remains, how does Hanwha Life actually win the game? And I can't assume that they will unless they do get a pick. Their, their entire team competition now has devolved to an Elise Cocoon and a Nautilus anchor into a Nautilus ultimate of some sorts because they cannot win a 5v5. It's just not possible. Elder Dragon is now coming up. A little bit unfortunate here, huh? Okay. Oh, okay. oh boy. Well, they just decide to let him live. They're feeling a little bit generous. Oh, are they? Yeah. All right. And I don't think there's any way. They can they can just burst the yeah, Hanma Life. I always love when teams do this. They 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 make the decision to not team fight over the dragon so that they can team fight against the dragon forty five <laughs> seconds later. That one really tickles me. Against the dragon every, with the every, Baron hitting. Every them. time I see it, I love it <laughs> so much. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Uh, it's the same argument from the Infernal Drake, where it's like, if you lose this Infernal, you're gonna lose the game. So you might as well fight now before they have the Infernal, rather than fight after the Infernal, when you're definitely, definitely gonna lose. So, uh, same thing here, the Elder is now on, as Banshee gonna go down on Tempt, and now they have Elder and the Baron going in. His cover immediately going to go away, and Temp doesn't even have enough damage to kill the support as the kill will go the way of the Rakan. 
And the one thing that Hanwha had going for them, the Kiana, is not going to stand a chance. Mord is backing because we got to save the base. As this looks like a solo queue game gone wrong for the side of Hanwha Life. All right, well. Um, Oh. Yeah, and uh, now Key's in a really awkward spot, and Kakao will be able to catch up to him. He's telling his teammates, wait, don't end the game, I need another kill. This is looking like a bad dead mind run. <laughs> like trying to run away from the ass. Watch out, Van Cleef's after you! <laughs> Someone pulled too many. Why didn't you res me? <laughs> Someone speared them. Yeah. <laughs> the other mobs. I feel pretty feared right now as uh, all I want to do is run around with my hair on fire. If you're on the side of Hanwha Light, I said it before, that might have been the worst game we've seen from them all year. Not just this season, not just this tournament, but APK. I mean, they took advantage of that. They came in. It was a little bit sloppy, but they got the job done. And we know that sloppiness likes to clean itself up, especially after a win. Guy's got it says, a nice APK, little I love you. Oh, it starts now? Yeah, this yeah, is it the starts start. now. Yeah. Starts oh, well, I, now, and oh. it might actually be correct as Bono did not have the greatest game ever. The bottom lane lost. Sangyun flashed away from a level one Rakan engage. Maybe it was level two, you know. Kind of want to give him benefit of the doubt because, as I said before, this is not the humble life that we see in the LCK all the time. Especially recent Hama life. I, I felt like Bono was getting really aggressive with the Jarvan and playing quite well in recent times, but this game of Elise is going to be one he'll try to forget as Kakao had a fantastic game. Yeah. I remember he was coming in, uh, I think it was last year. I forget which team he was on, but he was coming in and he did not look great and uh, eventually. Went back to another team, and now he's back in Korea. So, most damage in the game did come out of the Kiana, but take a look at the team damage on the side of APK. That is pretty massive. Even that Gragas just stacking up the numbers is, wow. Okay, not what I was expecting. Hamalife did go down, and APK is up a game, looking to get into that winner's match tomorrow. We'll see if they can close it out here after this break.
다만 쳐봐, 다만 쳐봐. 나이스. 한타 하자, 한타 하자, 한타 하자. 다 죽었어, 다 죽었어. 이거 죽어! 나이스! 나이스! 다음 쪽이 들어가자, 다음 쪽이. 우리는 들어라, 이 말이야. 다음 쪽이야, 다음 쪽. 댐핑 생각하자.